Are you feeling directionless or perhaps you're just facing a lot of challenges right now? You're not as sure what exactly to do. Well, I have a solution for you that's going to help you guide you through all of this. And that is creating your own personal vision statement. Think of it like your own Google Maps for life. Hi, if you're new here, welcome. I'm coming to you from a brand new location, my home. So for all the best career advice and project management, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button, and a new video is gonna to come to you every Wednesday. I have helped many people and organizations create their own meaningful vision statement. And this is going to be a two-part video series on vision statements, because I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step detailed guidelines on how to do just that it will be like i am with you in the room helping you create this statement so let's get to creating your personal vision statement okay so let's get into it let's get into creating our personal vision statement and focus on part one so there's very specific things that we're going to look at when looking at creating our personal vision statement and step one is to understand who am i and what do i want step two is about figuring out your dreams and desires and step three are what are your core values. So let's get to it. Okay, step one, who am I and what do I want? It's interesting because sometimes people, particularly in the corporate world, when they create corporate visions, they just jump right into it. But a personal one, you've really got to think a little bit differently. You have to go inward. Who are you? What is that inward reflection? So we're going to focus our time and attention here. And throughout this video, we're going to be pausing. So to give you the time needed, so you can do the exercises, the work and reflection. So the first thing we're going to do is get a piece of paper, a pen, and divide it into two sections. So as of today, really think about what I love about my life and what I want to change. Have zero judgment around this. Just dump it. The more you dump, the better off you are because you're actually going to just be not filtering anything. So don't filter. Put today's date and write down everything. So at this moment, pause this video. This is your little signal to pause so you can focus your time and attention on this particular activity. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we now have to take a look about having no limits in life. How do you see yourself 10 years from now? Whoa, Adriana, I don't know how I see myself 10 years from now. You know what? Yeah, you do. You have an idea of what you want in your life uh, from a career perspective, family, whatever that may be. Just put it out there, no limits. Again, this is our opportunity without judgment, kind of benchmarking, understanding. If there were no limits, how do you see yourself? So at this moment, give this video a pause and with your paper and pen, write down, or if you're inspired, draw your answer. Okay, throughout this video, reflection is gonna be really important. And so I really want you to take a pause really review what you wrote on the last two exercises. What did you learn? And really be honest with yourself. I promise you, no one's going to be seeing this unless you share it. So my recommendation is this is really your inner reflection work. Focus on you. Really analyze what is it that you've noticed. And this is going to become very important for you to move out of whatever thing, I used to say, whatever thing that you're stuck in or if you feel you're spinning your wheels, here's your opportunity to really kind of reflect, benchmark. This is what we do all the time in our business world, and it's really important to benchmark our personal life as well. So pause this video, really take time to reflect on what you learned about yourself on the previous pages. What I love about this quote, and I want to share it with you, is when defeat comes, accept it as a signal that your plans are not sound. Rebuild those plans and set sail once more toward your coveted goal, Napoleon Hill. So I say this because some of you may be really pleased with what you wrote, and by your analysis, you're quite happy with it. But others, you may go, holy smokes, what's going on here? I don't feel like I have any direction or whatever it is that I want to do. It's all good. There's no judgment here. Just realize that whatever it is you wrote down and whatever you analyze, you have opportunity to rebuild. That's why we're here to teach you how to rebuild and really create your personal vision statement that is going to guide you in life. Okay, let's now go to step two. So once we've done the benchmarking, who are you? What are you all about? We got to figure out even deeper your dreams and desires. 
So let's really focus on the shoulds and the oughts. So we want to list things here because this is now what I call the white noise of life that dictates us and sometimes steers us away from things that we're really interested in. So I say shoulds. These are the things you feel are necessary whether you like it or not. And I call this shitting on yourself. Yeah, I know. Shoulding on yourself. I'm not saying anything else. I'm just saying should, but you can get the connotation. So there can be really negativity with the shoulds. So I want you to list down everything that you feel that you should be doing. Now this is whether you like it or not and explain why you're doing it. Now again, there's no judgment here because there's going to be some shoulds in your life that you have to do no matter what. If you have uh, people that you're responsible for, well, you're going to have to take care of them, which means that you're going to need to work in order to get a paycheck to take care of them. That's a should, whether you like it or not. But it's interesting because a lot of times there's a lot of our life we live for other people, for other societal norms, things of that nature. And this is what we want to start pulling out. So list all the shoulds that you do and explain why. Now, afterwards, and again, I'm going to pause this, we're going to go to the oughts. So these are the things you feel are nice to have, but you haven't gotten around to because you're just so busy with the shoulds. So your shoulds are now taking up all your time. List the oughts, which are the nice to things do, and list why you're not doing them. So take this opportunity to pause this video and really analyze your shoulds and your oughts. Okay, now we get to a little bit of the fun stuff. We're going to write down the things that you love doing. So we kind of did this in the first uh, step, but now I really want you to think deeper. So what is it that you currently do that you love to do? And I would also like for you to also create what are the things that you love doing that you will one day do. Perhaps you just don't have time to do that at this moment. That's okay. We just really want to start capturing and going in again to what our heart's desires are. So take this moment, pause this video to really focus on creating this list. All right. Now, reflection time. As you know from step one, reflection is really important and in all steps, reflections are going to be critical because when you're creating a personal vision statement, you really want to make sure that what you're writing down and what you're creating is going to last for a period of time, not just for the moment. So really think about and review how you spend your time. Is it spent in the shoulds, the oughts, or the desires? So when you kind of analyze all of this, Would you say 80% of what you do is in the shoulds? Then are you really living your life or is it in the desire? So really give yourself this analysis and why, why is that? There may be very good reasons why your life is all spent in the shoulds. We all have circumstances. So you really need to have an understanding as to what it is. So the next question to ask yourself is what did you learn about yourself regarding this? Are you dictated by what other people think? Or are you independent and it doesn't matter what other people think and you're truly connected to who you are? And the next big question is, are you okay with all of this? So stop the video, take some reflection time, look at everything you created and really ask these three core questions. Okay. So why are we doing all of this? Why are we even taking a look at this benchmarking? Because to truly live your life's desire, to truly live and use your personal vision statement as your compass in life, it is important that you are connected to you, who you are. And part of that is ensuring that you have self-care. So here are some reminders for you as we move forward in this process particularly when we've been analyzing our shoulds, oughts, and desires. If something feels wrong, don't do it. You're now on this path of living in your heart's desire and self-care is going to be important. So if something feels wrong, don't do it. Say exactly what you mean. This becomes important because in too, too many scenarios and situations, particularly when it comes to societal norms, we are obliged to, or we feel obliged to say things, whether we mean it or not. I'm not saying uh, when you're going to say things exactly the way you, what you mean, that you have to do it in a negative way or in a disruptive way or in a rude way, because no, you don't have to. You can be very kind. You can be very thoughtful and loving, but you have to also honor yourself in the um, interim as well. 
You want to trust your gut. Your intuition is powerful. And if you're on this journey of self-reflection, trusting your gut and really listening to what it's telling you is going to help you with the direction. Never speak badly about yourself. So as you're uncovering who you are and what you're about, never speak badly of yourself because the only person who's going to ensure that you're fully loved is you. And people only pick up on the energy that you give out about yourself. So if you don't feel good about yourself, well, then other people are going to pick up on that. So really honor who you are. Never give up on your dreams. Your dreams are important. This is what's guiding you and making the decisions in life. And with self-care, if you have a dream and it's something that is really in tune with your gut, then go for it. Don't be afraid to say no so you can say yes. I always say that this is really important and this is why we're doing all these exercises is too many times we're so busy and we get caught up in the white noise of life that we say uh, yes to everything and it veers us off course and we're just busy with busy work. So by understanding who we are and what we're about and getting in tune to our inner being, we can start to say no so that we truly can say yes to the things that are going to lead us towards our desires. And be kind to yourself. It's really important, like the never speaking badly about yourself, that you're kind to yourself. And really let go of what you can't control. Too many times we try to control things around us. Realize you can't. Let go of it. And when you do that, there's a sense of freedom. Stay away from drama and negativity and love yourself always. So this list was inspired from the web. But as we move in this direction of creating our vision, it is so important that we start moving forward with self-care. Because the greatest danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. And then we're stuck being flat. So reach for the stars. It is so important. And part of that is self-care for yourself. All right. Last but not least in this part one is what are your core values? So now that we've really figured out who we are, we have a deeper understanding of our dreams and desires. We understand that self-care is really important to who we are and what we're about. Your core values are the next big thing that we have to take a look at. So they are the first step to understanding who you are in a greater detail. They are your guiding principle. I always say they guide you in the dark and most important, you live them 24 seven, not just when it's convenient. So your values are a big part of who you are and your personal vision statement. Now, when you understand what your values are, you may decline opportunities because they're not aligned with your values. This is very powerful. This is the ability to say no to things in order to say yes. But most importantly, you'll be open to new opportunities because of them. Things that you haven't even realized were part of who you are. I have a TED Talk actually that talks about this. So go check it out. Uh, TED Talk, Adriana Girdler. Um, but understanding your core values is a critical ingredient to a meaningful vision statement. It supports it. You have to know what your line in the sand is because core values are a description of your character, of how you behave and what you are like. They hold strong no matter what, especially in times of stress and temptation. And let me tell you, every day can be stressful and have temptation. And it is your core values that is going to be your beacon in the night guiding you 24 seven. All right, so what are core values? Well, here's a list to start you off with. And it's really important because you're gonna start picking some of this out, but there's more to this, believe you me. You go on the internet and there's tons of core values, but I have some if you go to myvisualvision.com and if we quickly scroll to it, there we go. We have right here on this website, myvisualvision.com, and if you scroll all the way down here and we click on this download, you can see there's a hundred other core values here. So go for it, download it, and you can start picking out things that really resonate with you. So once you do that and you pick out core values that you really resonate with, you're going to put them on a sheet of paper. So this is where we're going to get that sheet of paper again, and you're going to write them down. 
pick five max. Now, don't forget, these are things that you live 24 seven, so you don't wanna have too many. Five is actually quite a lot. I usually like to say three is a magic number, but you're gonna want five because we're gonna do some testing of this. But more importantly is once you write down what they are, you gotta define them. You gotta define what does it mean because Let's say honesty as a core value can mean many things to many people or loyalty can mean many things to many people. So you wanna define it for yourself. So at this note, stop this video. Go to myvisualvision.com, check out that core value list, pick out five that really resonate with you and define them. And then we're gonna move on once you're done that. Okay, this is critical. I call it this the core value litmus test. So you're going to ask yourself for the ones that you've chosen, you're going to ask each question here. And it's really important because if you answer no to all of them, then you're going to move forward. If you don't, you're going to have to revisit your values and find ones that you're able to live with 24 seven in any situation. So let's look at what some of these questions are. Would you honestly sacrifice any value on your list for money? If someone gave you a million, million dollars to go against a core value, would you do it? Have you lost any core value in times of stress? Do you envision 25 years from now this core value changing? Would you stop holding these values if at some point they became a competitive disadvantage? So if you answered no, so again, let's look at the money question. If someone gave you a million dollars to go against your core value, would you do it? No, I would not. All right. Have you lost any of your core values and stress? No, I haven't lost this one that I'm vetting out right now. Do you still see it? No, you know what? I don't see it changing. And would you stop holding these values if it became a comp competitive disadvantage? No way. So then you're going to move forward. But if not, you're going to say, you're going to go backwards. You're going to go back to the list, pick out a new core value, and you're going to vet it through this list one more time. What's really important with this is this list is gonna help you really understand what your core values are. Again, this is what you live 24 seven, a description of your character. This is why these questions become so important. Now, one thing to take note of, if you have a core value that you've said no to for all of these, but you have lost it in times of stress and you really like that core value, really analyze why you lost it. Did you understand it was a core value? If you did not understand it was a core value, then that's why you didn't have it up front and center and really living your life by it. But if you're willing to attempt it again, then that's okay. If you answered no, 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 but this is a yes and you're willing to do it one more time. Remember our quote before, listen, you're, it's okay to fail, it's okay to fall, pick yourself up again and move forward. So at this point, I want you to stop the video go through your core value list and vet it through this litmus test. Once you have it all, move forward. Because yay, you're now at a point where you know your core values and what's truly important to you. This is the critical fundamental steps for you creating your own personal vision statement and knowing how you are going to live your life. And in the famous words of Roy E. Disney, it's not hard to make a decision once you know what your values are. Okay, now that you've done your deep analysis on yourself, this is really important, understanding who you are, what are your dreams and desires, what are you really focusing your time on? This is the benchmarking that is so critical so that you can move forward from this. You gotta know where you are today in order to dream about where you wanna go tomorrow. So. Thank you for staying tuned. Watch out next week for part two. And if you could subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button and share this with all the people that you know. I would love to hear what you found insightful on your analysis that you've done so far with your personal vision statement. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you in part two.